Hey guys, Luke Cooley here, gonna give you a video. Here's that sun diving comment. Okay, I just wanted to show you that real quick before we get started here. Um, but that was on the 15th. Scott did a video, um, because I've been wondering, you know, what, why didn't they see this? What's going on with all that, right? Well, he did a video, and I suggest everybody go watch it because it gives a lot of good information. I didn't know any of this. Um, this was, like I said, it's a, it was a comet to begin with. Okay, it was very large. It was planet size, probably Earth size, if not bigger. And we can kind of say that because the captures that we got were out next to the sun because it did go into the sun. So it's about 93 million miles away, so it kind of we can compare it to the size of the sun and get a good you know, idea of how big it actually was. That, and it was moving extremely fast. Just saying. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, it was it was part of a bigger comet that got that was broken up several centuries ago okay it was from a german uh, astronomer henrik kruitz okay um he says uh, that this broke up he's you know like i said he said these fragments periodically enter our inner solar system okay um it says here it's been suggested that in another another cluster of them is going to be go coming into our inner solar system in the next few years to decades. So that means less than 100 years. Okay, it could be tomorrow. It could be whenever. But, and I have to say this too. You know, they, they didn't tell us this was coming because they didn't know. Okay, they didn't know this object, was this, this sun diver was going to happen. Just saying. So, with that being said, you know, I started thinking, I was like, well, you know... For some reason, it was eating at me, guys, and I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, well, what have we done, or what haven't we done, to look and cover all of our bases, right? Well, we haven't looked at the SDO that day. We did, but nobody really kind of uh, dug into it, like really looked at it strenuously, you know. There's sometimes, I look at these tools all the time, guys, and sometimes I, I just skim over them because I got so much to look at and so much to do. I'm just being honest, okay? So I do miss stuff. Everybody misses stuff, all right? But, so we're going to go back to the 15th, when this happened, on the SDO. Okay? So, what do we got? Right over here where this sun diver came in, what are you seeing right in here? We're seeing that C shape again. Okay. Just kind of picture, just close it up. What's it do? Right? I'll have to get that off there so you can see it better. See that? That is not a typical discharge, guys. Alright, I'm gonna back off here and I'm gonna show you. Okay, if it was just regular energy coming off the sun, it would look like that, like hair. Basically, it could curve down, whatever, but a backward C, or a C, I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I ain't saying that can't happen, because, you know, it could be like a filament coming across, and it looked like a C, or what have you, but that definitely looked like something, right? Because there's no other part of the sun at this particular time, all right, and we're looking right where that sun diver would come in at. So get, basically what I'm saying is, guys, I think one of our objects was here, okay, and it kind of drew it into the sun. And these objects, they're there in a 28-day cycle like we're talking about, all right, but they don't always have to induce a CME, okay? They just don't have to. They do often, okay, but there's times that they don't. That's why at first it was hard for us to catch it. But now it just seems like things are starting to ramp up and things are happening. And whether these, you know, the sun is in a weakened state and all other kinds of crazy stuff that's happening is causing stuff to react in different ways, okay, than it typically would. That's my point on that. And again, these are multiple objects. It's not just one object, guys. Not just one object. So with that being said, well, you know, this... This SDO capture was during that sun diver, okay? 
Well, let's go back 28 days. And this is how my, my, my brain works, just to try to prove what I'm saying. Let's go back 28 days and look at the same thing, okay? But before we do that, I'm going to take you guys... I want you guys to see the 193 angstrom because... I showed you the other one first for a reason. We do see more detail. It's not, I wouldn't say detail. We see... I mean, I don't even know how to say it. More particles, I guess. We, we see more in that light, that... Uh, angstrom that wavelength of light we see more stuff okay um but we see different stuff in other angstroms okay so we're going to go to the 193 and look at it okay you guys look, watch this see that right in there okay most people would just miss that and frankly i missed it i didn't go look at this until today and I never would have if I hadn't have thought, well, what happened where that sun diver came in? Let's go look at the sun, right? So that's what I did. And if you look here, guys, it's a, it's it's not even like, because you, you can't see it discharging from down here. It's as if something was going through the corona right there. See that? Wish I could zoom in more. Okay. Now... Again, I then so what do we do from here? Well, like I said, we go back 28 days. Let's see what was happening on the sun in this spot 28 days prior. Okay, so let's go to July. It was July 15th, just served by nose. I'll go to the 14th just so we have a better window to look at here. It was the 18th. That's stupid, Mark. Crazy. So we'll go to 17th there. And then 19th. How about that? All right. And we're going to look at it in the 171. Okay. We're going to go right over here to the same exact spot. All right, what's going on? All right, watch. Watch it. Boom. Okay, watch this. See that? Right there in that same spot. Watch that thing like wave. I don't know what is going on there. I can't believe I didn't see this before. Okay. I mean, I've seen the CME before, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. See that? Now, I think that's I think that's when the camera was getting moved around, so it really wasn't the corona waving around there. So kind of ignore that outer line. But what I'm saying is all this stuff that's happening in here is in that same spot. Okay? So we're back 28 days, right? Well, let's go look at, you know, did we see anything happen on the other tools on this day obviously guys you know i know the answer to that <laughs> um we did okay and guess what it was this ring any bells <laughs> okay so we're talking 28 day cycle here again all right um, you know, there that is, okay? <laughs> so, again, guys, you know, I, I'm not trying to beat this like a dead horse or anything like that. I'm really not. I just want to give as much validity to what I actually think is going on. And I'm not trying, I'm not trying to prove what I'm saying is true. I'm just trying to find what is true. So, that's... You know that's that's my that's my drive behind all of this. Anybody that's followed my channel for a while, you guys know I could give two craps whether or not I'm right or wrong. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm wrong. Okay, and <clears throat> I just want to know. I just do. And right now, this 28-day orbit 
is pretty much where I'm at, guys. I mean, I, I really think that that's what's going on. I mean, we have so much evidence for it now. That, you know, observational stuff. That it's it, That's what's going on. Something's happening right there in a 28-day cycle. If you don't believe in anything else, I mean, you almost have to agree with that. At least. At the very least. Okay? Whether you want to call it whatever planet system, whatever you want to call it, something's happening in 28-day cycles around our sun. We have a lot of a lot of evidence for it. You know, and Scott's plotted it out. He's predicted where this stuff was going to happen. Um, it's, that's what I'm saying. These dates are predictable. Okay? You know, and I have to say this too. Like I said, you guys got to keep in mind there's more than one object here. So we could see stuff in a 28-day cycle in different areas around the sun. Okay, that's why I'm showing you this. Because this is this showed up 28 days before that sun diver. And I just showed you 28-day increments on the SDO reacting in the same spot okay and i did a video a while back showing cmes in a 28 day cycle also off of the uh, seed site okay so i really wanted to just bring that to you guys um i am going to show you this real quick because i found this interesting um this is the stereo a from the 16th basically the day after the sun diver came in um you know typically i would say that this is a camera anomaly but I'm not sure I can say that 100% on this particular one, okay? Um, maybe. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great possibility that it could be. But what I'm seeing here is kind of odd. And what, why am I saying odd? Those two little things right there causes me to question whether or not this was a camera anomaly or not. Okay? I mean, I could sit here and call this a camera anomaly all day long just for the fact that it looks as if that is, you know, pretty much a straight line. And let's just face it, guys. Nature doesn't do things in right angles. Not most, not, not hardly any of the time does nature do things in a right angle. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I really wanted to show you that one. And here's the other, this is the other view, right? Now this is it's pixelated because this is stereo A core two, it's always pixelated. You can't get around it. Scott can convert it up to 4K and it takes some of it and smooths it out, but this you can't. There's no way to get it better than this, better than what a 4K could get. And I'm sure it could get just a touch better, but there's always going to be some pixelization on this uh, particular capture. All right. Now with that being said. When you take away that coronagraph I just showed you, the, the black and white difference model, those straight lines go away. This looks like it could be whatever. Um, I don't know. Uh, I just thought that was uh, very strange because of this. I mean, and man, I just don't know what to say about this. Okay? I don't. Those lines right there causes me to question it. Again, if those lines weren't there, I probably wouldn't even be talking to you guys about this. Because this looks... That right there, if it if it didn't angle down... See how it's kind of tapered down like that? If that was more of a... A straight line, I guess you could say. Kind of from here. We, we see these typically like this. Okay? Those shapes are typically camera anomalies. I'll go more into that in a couple weeks here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put together a video on that. Um, it's pretty interesting. I'm not going to go into it right now, but um, I'm not so sure that that's a camera anomaly. I mean, it's a good chance that it is, but again, what's causing that? Now, like I said, this I, I just wanted to show you guys that one. Um, I think that's pretty much all I'm going to show you guys today. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway, you know, 28-day cycle again, sun reacting in the same exact spot in 28-day cycles. Uh, you know, SDO showing stuff when the sun diver right there where it's, it drew it right into it. You know, did the planet, one of the Planet X objects help 
bring that sun diver in what you know all those are good questions and i'm just trying to show you these tools and what they're showing us and what they look like and and all that now the 193 angstrom i showed you looked like something was coming through the corona didn't look like it came from the surface okay didn't look like it came from the sun it looked like something was outside the sun and passed through the corona all right and if that was our object right here okay then you know again that could have helped the sun drag that sun diver in that's why we've seen it and like i said before the sun doesn't have to produce a cme when these it doesn't nothing set in stone that's what i have to keep telling people it may not induce a cme every time there's a good chance it will all right and it's really you know yeah <laughs> so but anyway guys that it, it is a 28 day cycle i just wanted to share that guy with you i thought scott did a great job with this because it's stuff i didn't even know any of that i hope that kind of helped people understand that that's possible too that these comets can be very big and they can you know be moving very very fast so that's why i showed you guys that it kind of helps explain that sun diver and why it was here to begin with but then when i started digging into it and seeing a 28 day reverse cycle there that stuff was happening still on that 28 day cycle it really you know I'm not sure I expected to get to that today. That's not really even why I went to do this. I just thought, well, maybe there was something funky. Maybe I could catch that sun diver hitting the surface, um, which most likely didn't happen. It probably got burnt up on its way in, just like it would, you know, a meteorite when it comes into Earth's atmosphere. They just produce, you know, fireballs, okay? Typically, they don't hit the Earth unless they're really, really big and coming in at really, really crazy angles so but anyway guys i am going to end it there um, i'll probably give you a video later on uh, tomorrow um, me and scott may be doing a live stream later on today i'm not sure yet but there you have it god bless yeshua saves and uh you can drink this kool-aid oh oh man this is really living <laughs>